Good afternoon and evening, Canada. Welcome to the Foresight 50. Today we are celebrating Canada's most investable clean tech ventures. I'm Jeanette Jackson. I'm the CEO of Foresight, and I am here with some esteemed guests. I know uh, Jason Switzer here, our VP of Growth and Capital, will be joining us shortly, and we have lots of other great speakers and presenters uh, joining us today. Uh, we would like to start by acknowledging that the lands on which we work and live are the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We are pleased to welcome more than 200 registrants who are joining us from across Canada today. Over the next hour, we will introduce you to the Foresight 50, and we'll hear from some partners. At 3 p.m., 4 in Alberta, 6 in Ontario, our virtual showcase will open. You can visit booths hosted on our event platform and engage directly with the Foresight 50 Ventures. I'd like to note that we are using a new event platform today, so there's always some kinks. Please kick, uh, be sure to use the chat if you have any questions or comments and need some support. At that time, we will also launch the Foresight 50 website featuring the list of companies, the pitch book, our judges, and other information about our process and event. So as mentioned, uh, Jason, unfortunately, is not on the platform yet. So I'm taking over. Uh, happy always to do so. Um, but really, I just want to sort of acknowledge how much of an undertaking that the Foresight uh, 50 was and, and thank Jason for taking a lead on this over the last couple of months here. Uh, we appreciate his leadership as well as the terrific work that he guided the whole team to execute. Uh, I am also happy to be here with everyone today. I know uh, that many of you are, that are joining us, whether you're an investor, industry partner, ecosystem partner, government partner, there's a lot of great energy and excitement surrounding clean tech today. And it's really with the support of all of you that made this inaugural list po possible. Uh, before we get started, I also would like to give a few special thanks to our partners whose support was essential, uh, Gowlings, WLG, and of course, the Clean 50. Uh, thank you, Gavin. I, I was really delighted to attend your event this year and be recognized as one of the Clean 50. So thank you. Thank you for that. I would also like to thank the National Research Council of Canada Industrial Research Assistant Program for providing funding support for its Clean Tech Venture Program, part of which made this event possible. Most of you are aware that Foresight is Canada's largest clean tech accelerator. We work with innovators, industry, investors, government, and academia to address today's most, most urgent climate issues and support a global transition to a net zero economy. After visiting COP uh, the first week, and, and we can debate that, I'd love to share uh, some findings of that another day. But what we are seeing is that more than ever, Canadians are extremely concerned about climate change. And as a resident of British Columbia, I'm devastated by the impact of the flooding and landslides, landslides that have rocked our, our province just a week ago. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be getting some more uh, bad weather. Our hearts go out to those who have been affected. And if you've seen the images of the farmers uh, working tirelessly, risking their lives to save the livestock. It's, it's absolutely devastating and it just brings home more and more why we live and breathe and do this every day. Uh, and you can also bet that we are combating climate change with all of the different technologies that we possibly can and are going to spread our wings and network as far as we can to help, help these ventures. Um, it has never been more important to promote Canadian clean tech than ever. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing with the Foresight 50. Uh, Foresight has worked with more than 750 ventures through our accelerator programs, events, and industry challenges. Our message we hear constantly above all others is that they need capital and they need a thoughtful way to be introduced to different funding partners and agencies to grow and scale clean tech ventures and uh, really need to uh, look at diversifying their capital portfolio as well. So it's not just the equity financing, it's debt and other mechanisms that we think will come available, in particular through the $130 trillion uh, that was announced at, uh, at uh, COP26. Uh, by recognizing Canada's most investable clean tech companies, we are connecting innovators with investors. And let's see how some deal flow can come as a result of this work and this event. 
We had more than 240 nominations for the Foresight 50, way above our expectations. And thank you to our executives and residents and mentors who helped vet the initial list of nominees. The selection of the Foresight 50 was carried out by a panel of judges representing investors, the corporate community, and the clean tech ecosystem. And thank you to the 16 individuals who took on that task and important role to make those difficult decisions. And without further ado, uh, we are very pleased to have remarks from the Government of Canada. Please welcome the Honourable Francois-Philippe Champagne, Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. C'est un grand plaisir d'être avec vous. It's a real pleasure uh, to join you today to celebrate some of our country's top clean tech innovators. Vous le savez, les technologies propres ont le potentiel de transformer nos objectifs climatiques en opportunités d'affaires. Ces technologies misent sur l'innovation pour nous aider à trouver des solutions novatrices aux problèmes d'aujourd'hui. Plus que jamais, nous devons conjuguer environnement et économie pour atteindre nos objectifs climatiques ambitieux et stimuler la croissance économique partout au pays. C'est pourquoi nous appuyons les précurseurs canadiens des technologies propres, et ce, à chaque étape de leur travail. C'est la raison d'être du programme d'aide à la recherche industrielle du Conseil national de recherche du Canada et de technologie du développement durable du Canada. As you know, Clean Tech offers significant benefits to Canadians. They improve outcomes for our water, for our soil, and for air. It also provides more than 218,000 well-paying jobs from coast to coast to coast. All this while helping us achieve our ambitious climate goals. It is for those important reasons and more that we're proud to support clean tech firms like the ones Foresight 50 is celebrating today. You are the innovators you are driving the growth of Canada's low carbon economy, and I'm proud to be with you virtually today. You are meeting the growing global demand for low carbon goods and services. You're putting Canada as a leader, and you're also helping Canada achieve net zero by 2050. I am excited to see the future impacts of your innovations. On behalf of all Canadians and all my colleagues from cabinet, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you, and I look forward to see you soon again. A big thank you to Minister Champagne and his team Bonjour for preparing. Oh. A big thank you to Minister Champagne and his team for supporting clean tech in Canada. Uh, and now the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, we begin our reveal of the Foresight 50, starting with the British Columbia. Please welcome Chris Ryan, Director General of IRAP Pacific. And Chris is not here yet, so we're going to keep pushing ahead. Let's go. Let's announce the, the, the BC list. So from the West Coast, we have Ausense, Bioform, Carbonet, Circular Rubber, Hydra, HTEC, GRT, Econa, Ionomer, Open Ocean, Portable Electric, Proper 8, Svante, Solaires, Rotolyptic, Recycle Smart, and Verdi. Next up, we're going to move on to the Prairies. Sharing the list, please welcome Rock Ripley, partner with Gowling WLG. Rock, over to you. Thank you. I am here. Uh, hi, everyone. First and foremost, I and the entire team at Gowling WLG congratulate all the winners of this inaugural Foresight 50. I'd also like to thank Jeanette and everyone at Foresight for being inspired to create and for their great job executing this event. Um, I'm speaking to you from Vancouver. And when I was asked to give these remarks several weeks ago, and as you heard Jeanette just mention, the city and more to the point, much of British Columbia, just to my east, was a very different place. By virtue of the flooding that's happened in just the last week or so, we've had towns evacuated, supply chains disrupted, uh, and most seriously, of course, homes and lives lost. 
Among other things, this crisis has been a reminder of how quickly our environment can change and how vulnerable we are and will remain to those changes. But at the same time, I remain inspired by and hopeful because of the ingenuity of companies such as yours and the tenacity of entrepreneurs such as yourselves to create and commercialize the innovative technology that's going to be integral to our future way of life. Clean energy and carbon capture technologies, of course, are important and are focused on by the media. But those of us involved in the industry know that it's much more diverse than that. Again, just looking within British Columbia now, technologies for flood prevention, wastewater remediation, and agritech are clearly going to be critical too. I practice intellectual property law and as such, am somewhat a student of innovation. We tend to take innovation for granted after it happens. We forget how incredible it is that humanity went from our first powered flight to walking on the moon in less than a single lifetime. That our last green revolution enabled us to feed the over 7 billion people we have on earth, which would have been impossible without technology. It's my hope that you're working on incredible technologies now that one day we'll also take for granted and that we couldn't imagine life without. Until then, I encourage you to stay the course, to stay inspired, and to remember that we at Gowling WLG are here to help you protect and profit from your innovation along the way. And now the Foresight 50 winners from the Prairies. We have 2S Water, Aerolytics, Carbon Upcycling Technologies, Clean O2, Drishya AI Labs, Ever Technologies, Fred Sense Technologies, Future Fields, G2V Optics, Catal Energy Inc., Proton Technologies, Sensor Up Inc., Summit Nanotech, Swirl Tax Inc., Total Containment, West Gen Technologies, Zillow Works, and ZS2 Technologies. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Rock. And I can't go without doing a little plug for our uh, IP uh, uh, podcast that we did a couple weeks ago. Check it out online. I thought it was a great session. I got a few notes from that. So always great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, continuing our journey eastward, presenting the Foresight 50 list of most investable clean tech ventures in Ontario, Quebec, and Eastern Canada, please welcome Gavin Pitchford, CEO of Delta Management Group and Canada's Clean 50. Gavin, over to you. Thank you, Jeanette. And, and thank you also, Rock. That was great. I'm, I'm going to be hard pressed to measure up to uh, some of the wisdom expressed in your remarks. Um, Delta Management Group is a search firm, the only one in Canada that's focused on sustainability and clean tech people exclusively. We've been doing it for, we've been ahead of the firm for 30 years, but we shifted into this field about 10 years ago. And shortly after that became aware that there was a lack of communication between different segments of the Canadian population and business population around sustainability. And so we set out to connect those different groups, including trying to find clients and customers for clean tech companies with the formation of Canada's Clean 50 Awards. And we've been running that for the last 10 years. And as Jeanette mentioned, it recognized her as one of our angels earlier this year, but also thrilled that, that nine of the organizations on the Foresight 50 uh, are also past Clean 50 award winners. And so with that, I'd like to move on to the list that applies to Ontario and Eastward, starting with Biome Renewables, Brainbox AI, CERT Systems, Evoco, E-Zinc, Flash Forest, GHG Sat, Graphite Innovation and Technologies, Manifest Climate, Nova Mera, Oneka Technologies, Peak Power, Planetary Hydrogen, SWTCH Energy, Technologies Ecofix. Congratulations to all of these winners. Thank you, Gavin. I'm raising my glass. It's still 2.20 uh, here in Vancouver. 
raising my glass to everyone. Thank you for your submissions. Congratulations. Uh, and there you have it, have it, the inaugural Foresight 50. To those of you who were nominated but not recognized here today, we hope to see your name on the list next year. Foresight has a range of programs and services that can help you build your business and you know where to find us online. You'll get a chance to meet with the Foresight 50 Ventures at their virtual booths in just a few minutes under the Expo tab to the left of your screen. To give you insight into the breadth of exciting solutions our Foresight 50 Ventures offer from across Canada and spanning numerous sectors, we've asked a few of them to share their elevator pitches with us today. I'd like to introduce Nicole from Business Development at Switch Energy. Nicole, over to you. Awesome. So electric vehicles are leading the way to a cleaner future, but a growing number of EV owners are living in multifamily buildings without access to home charging. And by 2022, there'll be over 5 million drivers without access to convenient home charging in North America. The entities that stand to benefit the most from providing EV charging services, like real estate developers and property managers, don't have a solution to provide charging cost effectively and are often left in the dark when it comes to navigating the options for charging. Moreover, utilities do not have an infrastructure to manage the growing impact of greater energy demand. So Switch was founded in 2016 to address the challenges of EV charging in high density settings. We're employing innovative technologies to promote the effective integration of EV charging in high density buildings. And our platform enables intelligent, customer-centric EV charging packaged as an end-to-end -end solution to our customers, all while managing charging to reduce energy constraints, shift demand, and accurately monitor and price charging services. We've raised over $5 million in equity financing, we've generated over $5 million in commercial revenue, and we've deployed over thousands of chargers across 200 locations in North America. We've been able to provide a seamless charging experience for our customers and continue to work with partners and utilities to further integrate our solution into the smart building and grid ecosystems, pushing widespread EV adoption into reality. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Next up, we're going to try to get David going again. Uh, Rock is leaving backstage. Thank you, Rock. David Wares from GHG Sat. David, are you here? Oh, I see him popping on. David, Can hello, congratulations and welcome. Well, thank you very much. I think one of the bigger challenges is because showing up on the uh, on the screen. So thanks for all the help in the background <laughs> making this happen. Over to you. <laughs> Perfect. So GHG Sat, uh, we measure greenhouse gas emissions utilizing satellites and aircraft in space. So we have our own sensors uh, in space as well as on these aircraft to monitor methane emissions at the facility level. We do this uh, working with clients in multiple industries, including oil and gas, landfills, as well as other industries such as mining, agriculture, and power generation. We launched our first demonstration satellite in 2016 to prove that this could be done. And after some very successful re results, launched our next two commercial satellites in 2020 and 2021. We're able to monitor methane emissions down to 100 kilograms per hour within a 25 meter spatial resolution. Uh, we have plans in 2022 to launch three more satellites and the following year, the plan to, to launch an additional seven. This will bring us up to a total of 11 satellites. Uh, in addition, we've used the same instrument but modified it to be put in the belly of an aircraft so we can fly campaigns for uh, different, different operators in and around uh, North America at this time uh, with higher resolution and a lower detection threshold. Uh, on top of this, we're also busy working with publicly available satellite data where we can ingest some of that methane information to better tip and cue our own satellites to help all of our clients find their methane emissions to mitigate them more quickly and keep them in the sales line. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. Really fascinating technology. I love uh, all that imagery and everything. It really brings it uh, brings it to life. Next up, we are going to go with Marisol from Ecofix. Marisol, over to you. Hi, thank you very much. So in North America only, there are more than 25,000 wastewater treatment plants that will need to be upgraded in less than five to 10 years. At Technology Ecofix, we give a second life to existing installation with our EcoFix and BioFix solution. 
We have design models that can be submerged directly in the water to be treated to increase the capacity of the installation by 20 to 60%. Our models are aimed to municipalities and industries. They are cost-effective, energy-efficient, and eco-friendly. Our company was targeting sales of 3.3 million this year, and we are currently at 6.5. We are looking for an investment of $2 million to accelerate our growth, specifically in the United States, and extend, and extend the team. Again, my name is Marisol Labrec. I'm the CEO of Technology Ecofix, and I invite you to join me for a discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Marisol. Really fascinating, and I will make sure to use Technology Ecofix. Moi, je parle un petit peu de français, mais j'ai oublié le mot just before there. Uh, hopefully, Ecofix is okay. Uh, next up, we are going to go with, uh, I believe, Mo. Is that right? We're going to go with Graphite Innovation and Technologies. Mo, over to you. Can you guys see me? You are good to go. Perfect. Hi. Over $223 billion is spent by the global marine fleet in fuel costs which really translates to 1.5 billion tons of CO2 emissions damaging our planet. Our solution is a smart protective coating that, that's applied to the hull and the propeller of the vessel uh, to reduce fuel consumption by up to 20%, uses 50% less layers of coating, which means less labor, less time in dock. And it's, it also lasts for about 50% longer uh, than traditional marine coatings. All of that with 0% toxins into the water. For example, for a 400 meter ship, the impact is quite considerable. You get back what you paid for in about 12 months. With new binding IMO legislations coming to effect in 2023 and 2030, vessel owners are forced to find more sustainable ways to score high in their energy efficiency index. At Graphite Innovation Technologies, we formulate and design for the future. We invite you uh, to meet us to discuss our venture. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. And remember that we're going to have breakout rooms after and you'll be able to connect with all these amazing entrepreneurs, thought leaders, senior executives to talk about opportunities for investment in their in their ventures. Next up, we're going to Dr. Matthew Anderson Barron, uh, CEO of Future Fields. Matt, over to you. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. So recombinant technology is responsible for some of the most important products in the world. Think vaccines, insulin, growth factors, therapeutics, Chances are every single person watching has benefited greatly from this essential technology, but it's come at a cost. Traditionally, these products are produced in microbial systems, which are inefficient and incredibly unsustainable. In fact, the pharma industry that currently manufactures these components produces more greenhouse gases than the automotive industry. And now new industries with massive potential like lab-grown meat are stifled because these existing systems have reached their limitations. We're solving this problem with a first of its kind insect-based expression platform to produce these same products more sustainably and at a fraction of the cost. We took this technology that utilizes genetic engineering and biomanufacturing from idea to commercial validation in one year with less than a million dollars. We're currently utilizing our platform to produce the key inputs in the production of lab-grown meat, unlocking an industry that will transform food production. And that's just the beginning, as we continue to pursue new markets for our technology, like the ones I just previously mentioned. In under two years, we've launched three novel growth factor products, which we've shipped to 38 companies worldwide. We raised our two and a half million dollar seed round last year, and we're now gearing up for our series A and we're looking for the right partners to help us create a more sustainable future through recombinant technology. Thank you. All right, so we are halfway through the presentations 
And I am very excited to see my colleague, Jason Switzer here joining us. I love the sweater, Jason. Um, I am going to pass it over to Jason to introduce the next five presentations and carry us through to the end of the Foresight 50. And uh, of course, you'll hear from a few more sponsors and partners towards the end. So enjoy the pitches. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Thank you, Jeanette. And thank you, team behind the scenes, for managing uh, over uh, over uh, 15 speakers and, and a whole lot of back-end stuff. So um, with that, let me introduce Cameron Jones, COO of Flash Forest. Cameron, over to you. So my name is Cameron Jones. I'm a co-founder at Flash Forest, where we are on a mission to plant as many trees as possible. And the tool we are using is drones. Every year, the planet loses a net of about 7 billion trees, which is about the equivalent of Switzerland as net forest cover loss every single year. In our company, we have four different pillars. We have our botany team that is uh, constantly working on different pod recipes so we can maximize germination and, and guarantee as many trees survive and are able to withstand anomalous climate events like we're experiencing this year, right? Drought and high heat. We have an automation team that is helping us produce half a million of these pods daily. Then we have a software team that helps our drones identify the ideal places to plant. And then a uh, mechanics team that basically develops all of the technology on the drone that helps deliver the pods into the soil as fast as possible. So Flash Forest, we are on a mission to plant 1 billion trees by 2028. We're on a tear. And uh, yeah, we hope to carry you along for the journey and answer any questions you have. Thank you. Uh, with that, let me uh, hand the podium over to Laura Guzman, Director of Government Affairs and Partnerships for Hydro Energy. Laura, over to you. OK, hi, hi everyone. Thank you, Jason. Well, then, first, thanks to Foresight and other sponsors for the award. Um, High Energy is a hydrogen producer, hydrogen distributor, and very important uh, in this presentation, a uh, technology developer. Uh, our technology is commercial already. Uh, we deliver our first converted hydrogen uh, diesel co combustion truck, the one in the picture. Uh, we just delivered that on October 20th to a pay fee uh, operating in Prince George, uh, BC. Um, this is a system that can convert existing vehicles, post sales class A trucks, to run on both hydrogen and diesel. And with this, we can displace 40% uh, of um, diesel combustion and associated emissions. Uh, Hydra operates with a system that a uh, business model where we don't charge anything for the conversions in exchange of hydrogen uh, purchases um if you want to talk further i'll be happy to talk to you in the booth many thanks for that and uh with that let me hand the podium over to um linal oh, excuse me to uh connor o'shea from west gen technologies connor We've got your camera working. That's fantastic. Over to you. Thanks, Jason. So my name is Connor O'Shea. I'm president and co-founder of WestGen Technologies. Uh, WestGen's mission is to address the problem of gas pneumatics. So some of you may not be familiar with, with what that is. The best example of a pneumatic device is the air gun that's used to put the tires on a car in your mechanic shop. In oil and gas, we also use pneumatic devices, but we often don't have compressed air on the well site. What we typically do have is compressed natural gas because that's what comes out of the wells. Uh, and so we use that to actuate the devices. The downside is that uh, once the devices are actuated, that gas vents into the atmosphere and it's composed primarily of methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas. So globally, the emissions from pneumatic devices in oil and gas are somewhere around 500 million tons of CO2 equivalent per year or 116 million cars. So it's a significant global uh, emission source. At WestGen, it's our mission to solve this problem, and we developed a technology we call the ePod. It uses solar hybrid power generation to power an air compressor and supply compressed air to those uh, devices. We uh, have been, we incorporated our company in March 2019, and since that time, we've now got over 100 units sold to 25 different oil and gas producers across Canada and the US. 
we've had a big development in last week with the EPA announcing that they are uh, moving forward with a rule to eliminate gas venting from pneumatics. So we're very excited about the future of our company and the future of um, the emissions reduction opportunity ahead of us. And so with that, I'll hand it back over to you. Thanks, Jason. And thank you as well. That was terrific. Thanks very much, Connor. Uh, and now let me introduce Linal Pereira, uh, Business Development for Savante. Linal, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, hoping everyone can hear me. Excellent. Uh, so hi, my name is Linnell. I represent Svante. Uh, we're a technology company based out of Vancouver. Uh, we focus on carbon capture, uh, specifically the separation of CO2 from nitrogen in post-combustion flue gas streams, uh, of which we focus on the cement and lime industry, hydrogen, uh, natural gas heaters and boilers, and biomass. Now we have strategic partners uh, for the full value chain, but we focus on the carbon capture. And we do this through solid adsorption. Uh, we develop our own in-house adsorbents and we manufacture what we call structured adsorbent beds, which you can see in the wedge on our rotating adsorption machine, uh, the RAM on the slide here. Uh, the RAM is our, our proprietary technology as well, it is loaded with our adsorbents, which have the properties of low pressure drop, high surface area, and the ability to uh, thermal cycle very, very quickly. Our actual adsorption and desorption of CO2 happens over the course of 60 seconds, so very fast. The above valving and below segregates your gases, and this is how you have a continuous uh, carbon capture cycle that we have been able to prove load follows very well, as well as having a lower capex than traditional liquid A means. We've been able to deploy this technology at a scale of 30 tons per day in a few locations, and we're working to commercialize this at the scale of 500 to 1500 tons per day of CO2 captured. Uh, I'm looking forward to further discussion. Thank you. And let me say thank you to everyone uh, for working their way through all this. Um, Sahar from Solaris, you're next, and that will be the last of our presenters this afternoon. Go ahead, Sahar. Okay, thank you so much, Jason. Hi, everyone. My name is Zakir Sahar Sam. I'm the CSO and co-founder of Solar. Imagine if we could capture the sun's energy from anywhere, from windows, building facets, electric vehicles, However, conventional silicon technology is not suitable. We need a new material and technology to fulfill the requirements for those applications. I invented a fabrication process for transferring conductive electrodes and thin film solar cells to enhance the properties of solar panels. At Solar, we make solar cells with a new material called perovskite, which has a much higher energy conversion efficiency compared to silicon. This is a $768 billion market. Our competitors are adding perovskite to silicon to increase the efficiency for conventional markets such as solar farms or rooftop. We only use perovskite to generate flexible and translucent photovoltaic films for innovative applications such as solar windows and solar vehicles. Our perovskite ink has the best stability and shelf life that enables manufacturers to create photovoltaic devices with lower manufacturing costs, 40% lower greenhouse gas emissions, and higher energy conversion efficiency. We have a comprehensive IP strategy that includes 44 patent families. Our fundraise started in September. It's a pre-seed round of $2 million. I want to thank Foresight for their continuous support. So there is innovating photovoltaic solution for a cleaner world. Thank you. And thank you very much, Sahar. Thank you to all of our presenters as we've dealt with some uh, pretty uh, complicated back end issues, but uh, we're, we're really pleased uh, to be able to provide this platform for such a diverse and fascinating group of uh, startups and later stage technology companies uh, to essentially show their wares and uh and and their stories with uh such a terrific group of investors and other partners who've joined us this afternoon um so with that maybe uh i'll just say a couple final words uh to to close things off and then we'll give people an opportunity to go and visit the uh the booths um so first off a thank you to our presenters again um i do want to share a few important messages First off, the uh, full uh, Foresight 50 list will go up on our website in about 13 minutes. Um, you'll have a chance to see it all on the website, download the pitch book, 
uh, see uh, as well the list of judges who participated in the selection process. Um, and, uh, and of course, we acknowledge their tremendous help. It was a number of hours of work for each of them on a volunteer basis, as well as the support from our executive and executives and residents and, uh, and advisors, mentors in uh, selecting the final list. Um, so uh, please take a few moments to go check out uh, our website as well. Um, the Foresight 50 Ventures will be hosting booths, uh, which are accessible through the Expo link. Uh, to the left of your screens. So do take a moment uh, as we as we conclude this formal session to go and visit these tremendous um, uh, these tremendous startups and get to know a little more about uh, their technologies, about their fantastic solutions, and uh, of course uh, it's an opportunity as well to interact with the companies who've been represented here today, as well as many others. Uh, a final thank you again. Uh, to our Foresight 50 partners, to Gowling, WLG, and Clean 50. And thank you again uh, to all the companies who applied. We couldn't, uh, unfortunately, uh, recognize everybody, but I know from interaction with both the judges and our and our advisory panel uh, coming into this, that it was a very difficult selection uh, and that uh, uh, they were all enormously impressed with the, the quality of ventures. So if you didn't uh, make the list this year, we look forward to having you in there uh, coming up. And uh, with that, congratulations to the inaugural Foresight 50. We look forward to watching your continued success and celebrating it uh, in years going forward. And now let me invite you, if I may, to uh, click on the Expo and check out our Foresight 50. So once again, that's over to the left, just above the replay button, you'll see Expo and within there, the list of uh, booths, which uh, we, we flashed on the slide just a moment ago in our slides. Um, I thank you again to all of the partners who, who supported us in making this a great success. And uh, of course, to the ventures uh, without whom none of this would be possible. So congratulations, entrepreneurs. Thank you. And thank you to our events team for terrific work.